um, um, either Hush or for, for me, Buffy versus Dracula. I had a really fantastic time. <laughs> Well, it's, uh, uh, and and I, I really enjoyed the Zeppo. And also, also the pack was a lot of fun for me. <laughs> that was my first Xander episode. And also, really, teaching. <laughs> there, there, there was only one bad episode, it was called Beer Bad, which is also a Xander episode. <laughs> but um, but I, in, in season one, to me, everything was just so, it was like I was living a dream. It was like, I, I was so blessed. I couldn't believe I was getting paid. To, to, to say words for them, that was nuts. But it was funny, but Teacher's Pet is, is, is where um, uh, I came up with, I guess in, in The Avengers 2, they have a whole like shawarma thing at the end of that movie. And Robert Downey was, was, was talking about, um, in, I think I did a weekly that he and Joss were discussing that it, it needed a punch up at the end of the movie. And Robert's like, you know, so Joss and I came up with it. And I'm like, you fucking lying. <laughs> And, and Robert and I both live in Venice too, and I'm like, I know exactly where he lives, so I'm just kind of waiting outside. <laughs> so then Josh finally said, like, you know, that, it, that I came up with the idea, and essentially I kind of walked into his office, I got a falafel, and I'm like, what's a shawarma? Like, it's, a, it's, a big, it's a big meat stick, you know? So he then put it in a teacher's pet when I get drunk, and then he put it in the Avengers. So that was very, very sweet of him to say, no, that was Nikki's idea. Every episode I loved, except for Beer Bad, uh, but the music was number one. Everything was dubbed in Italian. 
And she just watched it last year for the first time in English. And she likes it better than Germany. Yeah. <laughs> but I have to say that worldwide, at least in my experience, Buffy fans are just the best. They're totally cool. Totally, totally cool. It's not a little cute on the subway, you know. I don't want to disturb you, but I love your work. <laughs> but of course, fans in America are best. <laughs> that was actually the New York subway. On my way to Queens. Okay, but Buffy, thank you for coming. I did not, I was expecting maybe six people. <laughs> no, I mean, not, not for lack of want, for lack of wanting to get up. I mean, you know what I mean? Thank you for... He was up at five. I was up at five, you're right, but outside of that. I have a question for Miracle. Whoa. Sorry. <laughs> hey, hey. Um, I'm sure you've gotten this question a lot, but what was your favorite of the characters to play on Dollhouse? Because they were quite different, the characters. Yeah. Um, I love Nellie just because such an easy fit for me, and uh, I love the way that Joss wrote her and everybody else wrote her. And, and I think, you know, a lot of the writers said over the two seasons that they loved writing for Paul and Nellie, that it was just really fun. It was kind of like a break because there was so much other, way more complicated stuff, you know, things going on and, and plot points and characters and just crazy episodes. And it's just kind of like the one constant little, you know, relationship throughout the show. Um, and Top Mo, you know, and I'll talk about this more when he's here, but, you know, he was a total dream to work with. He was a very good friend on set, a good partner to have, and, and she was fun, and I, got, I loved, you know, obviously getting to flip the switch and be the sleeper doll. That was kind of amazing uh, for me. Um, no, I just, I loved Nellie a lot. It was really comfortable, and, and she, was, she was great, I thought. Yeah. I just, I loved every second. Uh, in Buffy, Joyce goes from being kind of a distant and estranged parent in season one and, well, the first half of season two. But once she's clued in, Joyce becomes very, very involved in Buffy's life. Uh, I was wondering what your thoughts on Joyce's evolution as a character before she was so tragically taken from us in season five. Um, I decided early on that, because sometimes there were things that were hard to reconcile as an actress, um, because Joyce could be, there were so many different sides of her. I decided early on that what you were really seeing was Joyce through the eyes of Buffy, from her point of view. And so the distance that you saw in, until she was clued in, to me, was um, a daughter, that estrangement that happens in those years where you, you need to separate from your mom and you need to keep her at arm's distance, and then you come around as you get older and sort of begin to realize that, yes, it's your mother, but you can see her more as a human being. So, um, <coughs> Because I'm not a distant mother, so, you know, you always have to sort of find your way into those things. So that's how I, I saw it, that, that you were seeing Joyce through Buffy's eyes. So thank you.
you can't just say, oh, look, this is about what he's saying. So, which screws me up on auditions now, because I was trained that you have to say every single word perfect. And if you fuck it up, you gotta start over again. But when you're auditioning, you can't do that. You have to kind of go, you have to see it through. But my brain is like, ah, uh, can we start over? It's like, no, I actually can't. Like, okay, thank you for coming. Yeah. <laughs> shouldn't wear that loud. That makes you fat, is what I say to the Cassio director. <laughs> so, um, I think there was one time where there was a doll episode where I'm like, rah, 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 rah. Um, that was the only thing that was ever in it, but Josh did not want any, there was no acting, there was nothing like that at all. And, and it was really weird, because like I said earlier, anything else you auditioned for, you had to rewrite it because it, it was so bad and like words that would never come out of a human being's mouth. So it was this strange, it was really strange to have because to memorize. Because you didn't feel the need to no. change. You know, it all felt yeah. natural once you got to that. One of the things too, yeah. it's great, it's when you have somebody who's, who's that passionate, who's like, I put that in there, I put that out there, I put that in there, for a reason. You're like, holy shit, this guy knows what he's doing. <laughs> you know, on criminal minds, if we get around, what we're trying to say. <laughs> we're moving on. <laughs> you know what I mean? And nothing, I mean, it's, I, I love him in the lines, but yeah, obviously Buffy, I mean, the way that Josh Wheaton works, it's like, you really, he does become your God. You know, it, it, it's like, especially when you're doing that particular thing, it's like, you know that he's thought this through far more than you have. So shut the fuck up. <laughs> hit your line. Yeah, hit your mark and say you're right. And maybe get a small little line of tears. <laughs> but never let it drop. That was him Josh. He'd watch Allison and Sarah. And you know, and then we would have a crying scene. And he's like, yes, yes. And he would see his little thing up. And then Sarah especially, it would drop. He's like, his tears would start to drop. He's like, fuck. He never wanted to see it drop. He never wanted the, the, the climax to happen. He always wanted it to end before a climax, which is crazy. So he would be Shot the scene. <laughs> and you thought you probably did a great job. Oh, I thought yeah. it was Nailed awesome. It. Nailed it. <laughs> Melly got to cry. Oh. Um. <laughs> you let it go with real tears. Yeah, let's hear Hi, um, my question is for Nicholas and Christine. Uh, I was hoping you could talk to us a little bit about your experience of shooting the body. Um, which is one of the most powerful hours of television I've ever seen. And um, specifically, I'm interested in Christine's uh, feelings since you were pretty much still for the entire episode, what that was like with all of that incredibly powerful emotion going on around you. Um, <clears throat> well, I hate to get all sad, but since I'm the one who died, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was incredibly emotional. It, 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 um, on, on so many different levels, because I sort of identified with Buffy coming home and just finding her mother on the couch. In fact, I could hardly stop crying through that scene, and I was supposed to be dead, so that was kind of a problem. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, when they hoisted me out to put me in the ambulance, uh, the paramedics, even though I was already dead, I actually had an emergency appendectomy this spring. And um, I refused to call an ambulance to go to the hospital. <laughs> I took a taxi. <laughs> and the taxi driver kept saying, Why didn't you take an ambulance? Why didn't you take an ambulance? In New York? Yes, in New York. And I was like, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> that was so painful. Um, but it, 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 was, it was very sad. And it was also really sad because I lost my dad when I was young. So I sort of saw it through those eyes, and when I read the script, I was so blown away by it because of the scene where um, Allison's trying to figure out what to wear to the funeral, because I had exactly the same experience of my father dying and going, well, what the hell do I wear to a funeral? You know, so I painted my nails hot pink and I wore this flower dress because I was kind of like, screw you death, you know, I, I'm not going to follow the script here, 
it's too weird. So um, that whole sort of exploration of what it's like to, you, to lose somebody when you're really young is, it doesn't happen to that many people, but, so you feel so alone when it happens, and I thought he captured that so brilliantly in that episode, and I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to have been the body. <laughs> It was the it was probably my least favorite episode to shoot in terms of 